ready when you are. Hello, future people. Welcome to Getting Tabled. Welcome to the Joir Isles. We're back. And this time we're covering the Anari. How are you doing, Ben? Yeah. Good, mate. How are you going? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's been a little while. We deliberately took a break from this. It was actually a deliberate choice uh, because mm-hmm. we pushed pretty hard for quite a while there trying to get everything done. So we gave ourselves a break. There is more coming after this, but there will still be a little bit more of a break yet. But today we are going to be looking at the Inari. So this yeah. is actually a set that we both knew was coming for quite a while, but we weren't allowed to talk about it. I mean, I didn't yeah. know about it. Ben never told me about it at all. What are you talking about? I signed an NDA. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I got. Uh, I was involved in some of the playtesting for it. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I've, yeah, these guys were like the artwork was really really cool. Um, and the concept was really cool as well. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I fought the urge, man. I was gonna buy it, but I was like, it'll add to my pile of shame. I, but, just I, mean, I just don't have the funds to. Well, I can't now anyway, but I just don't have the money to. So shout out to Craig. Um, he I know he wanted to get these, so um, I didn't buy them because I know that when they come out for general release, he's going to scoop them up. Silver Fox himself will be playing the Fox uh, race, which is only fitting, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, This no, is they- a box set that makes a lot of sense for the game too. I mean, Bushido is all about Japanese mythology. Nothing makes more sense than this box does. Um, well, George was very tempted to buy this. I tried really hard to push him to buy it, but he didn't because he's a, he's a spoil sport. Yeah, he wouldn't play with the rest of the kids. Um, no, no, but also like it's uh, it's it's a really cool box set because it goes in well with the t- uh, the the temple. Uh, so just like um, Open Rebellion, I reckon this is its own sort of little sub faction, um, and then. Um, but also it kind of complements some of the existing slightly older models who are also Kitsune as well. Like you've got the transforming one um, and then, uh, the, and then you've got the, uh, the, the, the samurai guy as well. He's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah For so those of you out there that are wondering why the monks get all of the cool stuff, it's because it's master Enos's favorite faction and everybody else can go to hell. No, I'm kidding. I'm being facetious. <laughs> um, the dark temple, are not actually part of the monks. They are a separate faction. Just in case anybody's... That, that is why they appear separately on the website. They're not actually from the same thing. The, oh, the... Yeah, the, the Void Monks. Well, yeah. no, they're, they're the Yang, the, the Ying, aren't they? Yes, of, um, the, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, these guys, I think... Yeah, these guys are quite... Um, the models are really, really nice, and their play style is quite unique as well, so... It'll be interesting to see what they, how they um, work on the on the table. So, I'm really Hopefully. keen to see how people paint them up too, because yeah. I mean the starter set was already an, a painter's dream, but this box set screams time. Like you yeah. could really, like you could really win awards with this if you were that sort of painter. I'm not, but. <laughs> Um, we should also probably mention that this box set, uh, all the models are resin, so this? there's no metals. Yep. Um, but and just like they did with the uh, two-player star set, the, the the sculpts on these models are amazing. Yeah. They're um they're really fantastic. Um, uh, my favorite one is the one with the two headed uh, the the two the two blades, the twin blades. Like we got some artwork in the back yes. there, and obviously, I reckon when we talk about the guys, we might just show some of the sculpts too. Um, but yeah, they're really, really cool. Um, ben yeah, likes um, this guy. Okay, right over your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> I also like the nine-tailed fox as well. I think that's yeah. awesome. He, yeah, that's really, really cool. But I, yeah, I would kind I, of love to see somebody paint that up to definitely not be a certain type of monster that fits in your pocket. I would definitely love to see somebody definitely not do that. I'm not why I, I, you joke, but I actually I did like. Oh, they, they both take from the same mythology. They're both based on exactly the same character from mythology. So, yeah, yeah, be kind of cool. Yeah. Um. But yeah, oh. who do we want to start with? Oh, I think we wanted to talk about the theme first, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to start off with the the followers of Anari theme, 
Uh, you want to go yeah. through that? Yeah, so the theme, um, so before making the tactical roll on turn nine, you win the game. Yay! I actually have a chance to win something. I'm not going to survive long enough, but I have, I have the chance. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Oh, it must be the, you know, uh, the nine-tailed fox. But yeah, hey, okay. Look, rolling <laughs> the ones can't screw me if I, if all I have to do is survive. Yeah. Um, I, lo- I, I, thought it, I thought it was a bit of fun there. Um, yeah. Once per game in the, sh- in the starting phase, declared uh, this ability. Until the end phase, models in this warband can re-roll all dice um, in any size, move, or key test. Uh, dice may o- only be re-rolled once per uh, due to this ability. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so there's some little tricks you can do there with that. Um, and then whenever an opponent uh, uses a pass token, that opponent must choose one of your models marked with a, uh, sorry, with marked wounds, if any, to heal one wound. So this is a, so that's, that's really, really good against the Ryu um, yeah. players or, low cost um armies so for example like ninjas yeah. i think they're um because ninjas can also generate extra um pass tokens with certain models so yeah that's that's pretty cool so if they use a pass token you go well i'm gonna have to heal one of my guys but it gives it, there's a little uh, cost involved in that which is pretty cool so if you have that player that always pulls that trick they're really gonna hate this force because well, you're gonna you're gonna punish them for being that person yeah, well, we didn't really talk about it in the Ryu video, video much, but like with Ryu, uh, so with the prefecture of Ryu, you can, um, yeah, you, their pass token system, you can generate a lot through them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be a bit of a detriment there. Um, also, the more models you kill of your opponents, they the more pass tokens they generate. So works in your favor as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, permitted, now the permitted in the theme uh, are Kitsune makes sense. And Ronin Kitsune, which makes me think that there is going to be some more models coming out down the line. Well, we do know of one already from... Haven't they teased images of one already that we don't have a model for yet? There's no sculpt released yet for him. Um, He's got, uh, from what we can see in the artwork on the back of the card, he's got uh, two sort of banners um, and he's got like a a sword in him and stuff like that. We can maybe... The images for him are available on the... um, on the Bushido um, app, uh, so you can see him. Um, I believe the model we're talking about, I think his name is uh, Ho Foku. Um, I believe that is. But, yeah, we can we can talk on about him later. But, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe start with the Bok and then we'll work yeah. on him because he's going to get released maybe when the general release comes out. I'm not too sure, or later on. But, yeah, he's that, pretty that cool That was too. the assumption that we'd, that we'd made offline. Juko? Uh, or Yuko, it could be either. I suspect that it would be Juko, though. Uh, he is a he is a Kitsune or a Kitsune, mm-hmm. and he is Yokai. I'm not going to do the the thing that I normally do. Uh, Thirteen rice. Yep. He has two melee. He can boost it for three. Uh, he can move four. He's got mm-hmm. six wounds. He's got two ranged, and he can boost it for three. Yeah. Um, and then he generates two key to a maximum of nine, and he can boost it for two, which is quite nice if you're up against tests. Mm-hmm. Um, weapons wise, he has a paired Wakazani, oh, sorry, Wakazashi, has a plus one strength, comes with combo attack zero and push defense one. He's also got Not a bad. throne dagger. There's no strength bonus on that though. It's got one ammo, mm-hmm. uh, combo attack. I'm not sure how you combo attack with one throwing dagger, but okay. it, that doesn't matter. So when you know, when you're doing the throw attack, like when you do a successful hit, you um you can then use you can choose to use the combo attack effect on that on a successful hit. Um, the range is three, five, and seven. That's the range band. Yep. Uh, we have bravery, evasive, faint, parry. Six Sense and Vengeance Kami. Mm. Yeah, so he's got Faint One and Parry One. That's really good, especially yep. for a uh, for thirteen rice model. Not bad yeah. at all. Yeah, it's not not bad at all. Um, and he really doesn't like Kami. 
that's going to take that's going to take effect on the backside as well. Um, first things first, he's got one key ability, rectifying Shomyo. Cost you three. It's a simple action, and it's got an aura of six inches. Uh, is that once per game? Yeah, once per game. Uh, when a friendly friendly model kills a Kami model in a melee exchange, while in the aura, you may replace the Kami by summoning and deploying a friendly eight rice cost Kami with identical elemental icons. If the enemy has no elemental icons, you may replace it with a void Kami. And then in the unique effects, while in base to base with this model, any enemy models lose the intangible trait. That's yeah. potentially nasty. Uh, and this model gains assassin why involved in a melee exchange with a Kami model. Yeah. So this is really cool. Okay, so this is really, really good um, because so and cool. Uh, because we're seeing a lot of um uh I mean what's the what's the new hotness at the moment? Pardon, pardon the pun. Um fire kami. Fire kami are being yeah. taken a lot because of the um, because of their uh, shooting ability. I know, for example, when I play Minamoto, I take I usually try to run two fire kami or at least one with a blacksmith. Um, yeah, that's that's really cool. So you can you basically if you kill a can't well, once per game, if you kill if you so if this model or another model kills a fire kami, then you can gain a, a, a friendly fire kami, which just benefits you. Yeah. Now there's other models as well out there. That count as Kami. So, for example, the Ancestral Spirit, uh, who is a um, he's a Ronin model and can be taken by most factions. Um, he's a Kami. He counts as a Kami. So, if you kill him, and he's he's pretty good because he can dish out key where it needed, and um, he, also he's a competent fighter. I mean, you replace it with a Void Kami. We haven't seen a model for a Void Kami yet, and I'm kind of excited to see what they do with it. Um, yeah, I'm very keen to see what the model ends up looking like. Yeah, um, because that's one that could have a lot of fun with. Yeah, I, I feel like it's going to have something like uh, there's going to be a fair amount of like negative space sort of use. Maybe I, 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 I'm kind of cool to see what they do. Uh, are you familiar with Fern Tree Gully, the movie? I, I, I kind of want to see the smog creature type thing. Oh, oh yeah, but I think they kind of have that for intangible the, the the Kami of I think it's like the choking fog or whatever it is. It looks very similar oh, to yeah, fun. True. That's true. Um, but I like this. So he's pretty much like he's like a Kami killer, which is really quite good. Like tangible. So en enemies with intangible. Um, there are. I'm pretty sure there's um, there's some ninjas that have like intangible. Um, there's a few things that Ghost out there. That's the first one that comes to mind. Yeah. So yeah. So for models that like like usually do like that hit and run, slip away sort of effect. This sort of, this guy stops it. Yeah. Um, and also, this, mo uh, this model gains um, assassin while a mo sorry, involved with a melee exchange with a uh, Kami model. That's great. So you're rolling three dice, and you can add two of them to get your um, your score. Uh, like, so you're basically counting like you're hitting it in the back, which we uh, we covered uh, the assassin rule in the ninja episode. Yeah. Um. He, yeah. He's like death to Kami. I I like this guy for thirteen rice, and I'm guessing we're going to see more Kami come down the the pipeline. Um. So yeah, this guy would be really really cool. Um, and for those wondering, yes, he falls within his own aura because he's literally the source of the aura. So, yeah. yes. All right, Ben. You want to shoot the dog or is it going to pop up in there? Yeah, and he's got, he's got, he's, he's the bard. He's got the guitar, man. He's, he's, uh, this guy, I tell you what, like, he's, he's, the, um, he's killing Kami or creatures, right? And he's got a guitar. He's definitely Eddie from, uh, Stranger Things 4. Yeah, right very, now. very, very much so. Yeah. Um, do you want to look at Kyoto? Kyoto, um, starting with his fox form. So this is this is the big thing that when we first spoke about this, we didn't realize this on the podcast. The animals that look like that, like you have a fox form and a human form. They're not actually different characters. They are the mm -hmm. same person that has two different forms. It's not that their pet has dressed up to look like them, which is what we thought was going on initially. Yeah, so the so the way that like these guys work now, you'll notice, so for example, with uh, Koto's uh, fox form, you'll see that there's a rice cost of 17 rice. 
Now, um, uh, like she is a, um, a Kitsune, she's a yokai. Uh, she's got one melee. Uh, she can boost out for three. Um, she's got six health. She's got movement seven as a fox. Um, and she can boost out for two. That's huge. That's she, nuts. So that's nuts for speed. Um, shooting of one. She's she's currently in the fox form. She's not going to do any shooting. Um, she uh, generates three key per turn. She can hold nine. Um, she can boost her key feet. So opposed key test for two. Um, he's got bite with minus two strength. Uh, he's got sidestep defense zero. The fox, um, yeah. um, which is good. Now in the fox form, she's got agile, aloof, bravery, dodge two. That's amazing. Um, evasive, light footed, so she can move through cover. Um, six sense, spirit one, tiny and weak. And then she'll have the form shape shift, which will will cover up, um, and you'll probably see on all the other fox forms, but. She has to be deployed as a fox at the start of the game, so you can't use you can't deploy her as a human form. Um, and we'll go onto the back of the card of the fox form. So with shape shift, it costs one key. You have to be the active player. So replace this model with uh, Koto, a human form model. Transfer transfer marked wound state markers enhancements and any t uh, tokens. Encounters to Koto Human Forms profile card. So you're basically just swapping the model with with the other model and, and in this exact location, and then transferring any wound markers and such mm -hmm. along with it. Now um, she's got a unique effect, so um, which I pretty much just covered. So when deploying this model, you must choose to deploy Koto so Koto's box form model and begin with that profile card. So you have to do that at the start of the game. Uh, Koto's fox form and human form profiles are considered the same model when creating a warband. Um, and then this model may only be included in the followers of Irani theme. Uh, so we've noticed with a lot of the um, sub factions, so like um, Open Rebellion, there's usually one model in the box deck that can only be included in the theme, and that model usually benefits a lot of the other characters. So makes gives them a lot of like strength. Which I'm guessing this is the one. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to wear her human form as well? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um. So uh, she's got the big staff above her head. Um. I like. I, and she's got the cool uh fox, like the, the painted fox sort of face. I I love it. So uh, Kuto human form. Uh, special rice cost, as we mentioned. Kitsune and a yo uh yokai. She's got a melee pool of three. She can boost that for three key. She's got a movement of form, so she's human, so she you know uh, gets that fox, uh, uh, loses that fox speed. Health of uh, six. She's got a range pool of two. She's got um, generate. She generates three key per turn. She can hold nine, and she can boost her key feats for two. Um, opposed key test, I should say, with for two key. She's got absolution, absolution, which is uh, I believe this will be her staff. Uh, so it's a two-headed staff with two symbols on it. We've got Absolution, which has got Reach. Sidestep Defense, zero. Amazing. Um, it's got minus one strength, though. And then she's got Conviction, which is the other side of the staff, which has got Reach. And Stun Attack, one. And plus one strength. Uh, she has Bravery, Dodge, one. Faint, one. Um, and Six Sense. That's also really, really good. Uh, she's got three key feats, um, which is Dharama. For two, it's a special. Um, it's a target of nine um, inches, and it's a post key fest, uh, an opposed key feat, I should say. Sorry, um, it's, you can't do it in base to base, and it's a one per game ability. When target non -ex exhausted model next activates, you may choose a valid simple action for it to do, for it to perform. The model's controller must resolve the chosen action. If the target does not activate before the end phase. This effect expires. So if you got like, that's pretty cool. So you could basically, if someone's going to do like a big hit on one of your models, and especially, you know, usually have like your, um, you know, like your units that will like heal other people, or will um, you know go into um, into combat, so big hitters or something like that. You could basically go cool, simple action, or you know, and you could make it do something a little bit different than what it's going to do. Um, 
I kind of like that because that kind of messes that that gives you the option to mess with like an opponent's sort of um, ability um, or, or like you know a battle plan potentially. So I like that a lot actually. Um, her second uh, key feat is Final Verdict. Uh, costs you two key. Uh, it's a simple target, nine inches, opposed key test. You can't do it if you're in base space contact, and it's a one per turn ability. Your opponent must choose either a death sentence marker or a control marker. Target enemy model gains one of the following, so one of the chosen markers. That's pretty cool. Uh, so you're basically going like, oh, so do I control that model of yours? Or do my, <laughs> if when I'm targeting a model with a death sentence, do I get a uh, benefit for my other guys in combat? Um, a sp final verdict is quite good. I like that a lot. You probably see that go off a lot more. Um, and then you got the third key ability, Kanagara. Um, so two key, simple action, target opposed uh, key test of nine inches. You can't do it in base space contact with an enemy. And it's a once per turn. Until the end phase, if target enemy model declares an action other than focused, it gains a control marker. Once the action is resolved, unless it has a control marker when the action is declared. That's really good as well. Um, I like this model because you're, she gives you the options to really stuff around with your opponent's battle plans with yeah. pretty much all of her feats. I mean, the once per game one is pretty big, um, and that can be pretty – you can do that, you know. But I like Final Verdict, and um, I like Final Verdict a lot, actually, because – yeah, you can if if you can either control them and you can move them away from ob ob objectives, or you can you know if they have a death sentence marker, your guys who are in combat with them or go into combat with them get benefits. Um, yeah, I like her a lot, and um, not bad for what is what is she seven, seventeen rice? Yeah, she's good. Yeah, she's nuts. Yeah, I don't th model, I don't think there's a bad option am among those three because I quite like Kanagaro as well. Yeah. Okay, you can do anything you like. But if it's not this, then I get to take control of your model. Yeah, Kanagara is really good. I yeah. dare you to do something else. Yeah, because focus, they just have to sit there and just like, yep, just twiddle their thumbs. Contemplate life, as Craig would say to me. Um, yeah, no, I like it a lot. Um, There's no bad yeah. options there. Yeah. Yeah. She's generating really, really 3K in the. So by the time that that second turn comes around, in theory, she could pull all three of these off in the second turn. Mm. It yeah, shouldn't she be too hard for her to do, to do that because she's moving seven inches in the first turn. Yeah. And... Uh, oh, no, oh. no, because she's got to pay one, she's got to, pay one to, um, to shapeshift. No, that wouldn't work. Yeah, well, yeah, because she, she has to, to to do it. But I, I like her. Um, yeah, I, I like her model a lot as well with the the two headed, um, the double headed staff like above her head. I reckon that's really really cool. And just like and and I think her her fox her fox form is really awesome as well. Like I, you know, I, I did send you some photos and stuff, so I hope, hopefully where you know these are popping up. Um, but it's got the it's got the snake. In its mouth. So that's a big F you to, uh, um, to Ito players. I love it. Yeah, I called that out on the podcast too, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's the like it. Coming up next, we've got Tekaru. This one actually mm -hmm. does come in its human form, which was a surprise to you, Ben. You were expecting it to be the other way around. Um, yeah. Now, he costs you 15 rice. He's a Katsuna mm -hmm. and a Yokai. This is kind of the same for all of them, so... He has three melee. He can boost it for three. He has four. Sorry, he moves four. He's got six wounds. He has two ranged, which he's not going to be using. He can generate two key. He can hold nine. He can boost it for two. He has a double glaive. So this is the one that I really like. This is the um, th this is Darth Maul, but in fox form. Because yeah. he's got the dual saber. Um, plus one strength, PS one, reach, yep. combo attack zero, push defense one. Um, and any time you get reach is a good thing in my opinion. 
Anything, Man. anytime you get combo, anytime you get combo attack zero is amazing as well because it doesn't happen <clears> a lot. <throat> uh, bravery, evasive, faint one, six cents, and vengeance soulless. Mm. So he's got two key abilities. The first one's requiem. Cost you two. It's a simple action. It's got an aura of nine inches, but you cannot be in base to base. Mm-hmm. Kirai models cannot be deployed in the aura. Models in the aura cannot be replaced with Kirai models. Uh, and then he has Shapeshift, which is, I know, going to be a huge surprise to everybody. Uh, it costs you one, you need to be active, and it's a special. Replace this model with Tukeru's Fox Form model. Transfer all marked wounds, state markers, and enhancements and any tokens and counters to the Takeru Fox Forms profile card. Mm. Because you can't just lose all of those things when you change. That's not the way the Bushido works. Uh, you will find this across the board with anybody that has a transforming gimmick. Mm. Uh, unique effects. Enemy models lose rise and last stand while in melee exchange for this with this model. Instead mm. of making a damage roll, Against durable models, this model will always cause one wound, ignoring tough. That's okay. nasty. And this model gains assassin while involved in a melee exchange with a soulless model. So we're starting to see a bit of our theme here. Everybody seems to be focusing on something that's annoying. Pretty much. Yeah, it seems like everybody has like a, a strength against the enemy of the of the Rokai, uh, or like so the Temple um, Rokai. So this guy uh, would be really good. Well, one like I'm I'm looking at his like uh, durable effect, like one that's fantastic against the Minamoto um, <clears throat> uh, army theme for the this, this, the finest steel, but also uh, ignoring tough. That's uh, bad news bears, but also. Um, that's really good against like your you know durable, so that your uh, your kami as well, like even your, your undead kami and stuff like that. Um, also, lose rise and last stand. Like rise is like the cult. Yeah, so these guys yeah. are all about like you know, targeting you know um, those sort of different factions. So you got a bit of a Swiss Army knife sort of faction. Yeah, this from is really good. Stuff. Now, obviously, yeah. we also need to look at his fox form. Yeah. I, I I now I reckon this guy's fox model is the best. He's got the he's got the little dagger in his um in his uh, mouth. I love it. Yeah. Um. So you cannot you cannot start in this. It's special. Katsuno Yokai, mm-hmm. like the other guy. Uh. He's got one. He's got one melee. He can boost it for three. He can move seven because he's swift like a fox. He can boost it for two. He's got six wounds. One ranged. Still generates two key. He can still hold nine. He can still boost it for two. He can mm. bite, which has sidestep defense zero. Again, he's a fox. Uh, negative two strength. Agile, aloof, dodge two, evasive, light footed, six sense, spirit one, tiny and weak. And then obviously shape shift, which is the same, but it goes the other way. In his yeah. unique effects. When deploying this model, you must choose Takeru's fox form model or Takeru's human form model to begin with that profile card. So this one actually allows you to pick one or the other, which is yeah. really weird. Uh, um, yeah. I, yes. I guess mainly yeah. because the previous one that you just finished talking about Needs to have that restriction to keep it fair, I suppose. Yeah, I guess, but also I, I reckon what. So if you're playing an objective mission, which you know, some of the uh, which majority of the missions are, um, you want to run up as quick as possible. So I yeah. would have this way. I would have them all, all in fox form. Personally, r- yeah. Race up towards. Yeah, race up seven inches. Oh, hang on, but then you could boost it. So if it's like two, so you could. Yeah, you can boost it with your first key to key if you really wanted to. But I mean, I, 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 if you really, really wanted to, if you're like versing like something quite um, slow, like a Minamoto faction, 
I would mm-hmm. I would boost it because they're not going to get to you until like turn three potentially. Um, and because you got movement seven, you're not running. So yeah, you know, you, yeah, yeah. Like there's, there's there's it gives you that option. I I, I like that. I yeah. like that it gives you especially for your guy who's pretty much going to be your comp. This is he's, he's your combat guy. Yeah. Um. Uh. The yeah. only the only other thing there is um the same thing that the other one had, which is that both are the same model when creating yeah. a warband. Mm. No, I, I, um, yeah, I really I love like this, this guy. Yeah, I, I love this guy's model, both the human form and the fox form. I think they're, I think he's amazing. Um, yeah, I, I like him a lot. I just, um, yeah, like he's, he's versatile. This, uh, like the, the, the pierce one, that's really, really good. The reach, the combo attack one, the push defense one really helpful. So if you're in a bit of a bind or if you need to push somebody out of a zone of control or something, just get rid of them, you know, that gives you that option. Um, I like it as well. Um, so the evasive works. The sixth sense is great as well. They're not going to be surprised. Um, that works. Yeah. That's yeah. 15 um, rights. He, he's, 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 he's a solid profile for 15 rights. Very much so. Who did you want to look at next? Um, I want to talk. Why don't we do the, the nine tailed fox? Because I really like this model. Um, okay, so the nine tailed fox is nine rice. Uh, it is a greater kami, it's a kitsune, uh, kitsune. It's melee pool of two. Uh, it's got a movement of six. Uh, it's got no ranged because it's a fox. Um, it's got generates zero key but holds uh, holds nine. Uh, because it's a kami. It's got Bite, which has no strength. It's got Agile, Evasive, Insignificant, Kami, Sixth Sense, and Solace. It has one key ability, which is uh, Inari's Luck, which is uh, one key, instant, um, a pulse of eight, uh, sorry, of nine inches, um, and it, you can't do it whilst you're in base space contact with an enemy. So when a friendly model in the pulse makes a test or a damage roll, it may re-roll one of its own dice in that test or roll. Dice may only be re-rolled once due to the key feat. This key feat may be used only once per activation. Um, and you have the unique effect, uh, which is when this model makes a challenge or opposed test, it may re-roll any number of its own dice in that test. Dice may only be re-rolled once due to this ability. And this model may only be included in the followers of Anari theme. Um, I really like this model. I think it's fantastic. Like, uh, like it's behind you there in the picture. But like, yeah, I really, uh, I really like the sculpt for this. I think it's really, really cool. Um, nine, um, nine key for something that sort of like ben- causes benefits for <laughs> padding it there. Um, yeah, nine key, which you can then benefit your um, other tr- uh, other guys. It's definitely worthwhile having. Um, kind of seems like, I mean, it's it's it can still interact with other. Um, it's not in. Uh, yeah, okay. It, it, it hold- almost kind of feels like a mascot. I mean, it's not a mascot, but it kind of feels like that way from a mechanics point of view. It's there to help everybody else, um, yeah. but it also gets to use its own ability. Like it's all like it, the whole thing about this thing is that it lets everybody re-roll stuff. So you kind of want this to be in the middle of all of your guys, really. You'd prefer to prevent them from being outside of that nine inches. Nine inches is a pretty big bubble for a um, it's a pretty big aura for a not for a twenty-four inch table. So, yeah, I was just gonna I was gonna say that the nine inches is huge, um, but also. Because she's got like evasive and she's um, and, and agile, like uh, the nine tailed fox can move where you need it to be. So in the event like you need some boost in combat for one of your guys, because you've got a, quite a small war band. What have you got? You got one, two, three, uh, four, maybe five, maybe six models, depending on, on what you're taking. Um, yeah, like she, like the nine tailed fox for nine rice will give you that sort of like you know that perk there for um, well you know give you a bit of luck there uh um yeah no, i like it i like i like the model yeah all right profile 
we have Tengoku. So mm. this is the big one. So that is uh, this one up here with all of yeah. the robes. She has all of the robes, all of them, and then, and then more robes. She will cost you 20 rice. She's a Kitsune. Mm. She's a queen. And she's your Kai. Still not doing yeah. it. Sorry, I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> cost you two melee. You can boost it for three. Moves four. Boost it for two. She got six wounds. She got two ranged. She can boost it for three. She generates three key. She can hold nine. She can boost her tests for two. Her melee is Providence with a plus four strength. I don't Ouch. think we've seen. Have we seen plus four before? I don't know. don't know of any. I don't even know if the great water kami has that. Mm. Like the dragon. I might look that up Not in bad. a second. Yeah, um, yeah. Ill fortune is the ranged. That's a powerful attack one. There's no strength modifier on that though. Um, probably yeah. just as well. And three, it's six, a- and nine is the range okay. band. Uh, she has agile, defensive, evasive, impenetrable defense one, and six sense. And then she has three key abilities. Right. Curse fate costs you three. It's a simple action. Target needs to be within 12. If it's an opposed key test, you can't be in base to base with an enemy model. And it's once per turn. Roll a number of d6 equal to 1 plus the SL of the opposed key tests. Reroll 1s and dice with the same value until all dice have unique values. Until the end of the phase, the target considers any dice it rolls that match those dice rolled to be a value of 1. That's... Really nasty. Yeah. For someone that rolls ones enough, thank you very much. I don't need you to make my game even harder, Mr. Enos. <laughs> I consider this a personal attack. I These sixes attacked. are already trying to kill me. Yeah, well, that's that's really, really good. Yeah, no, that that's that might be the best witch type ability that I've seen. Not, she's not a witch, yeah. but of all of the ones that I've seen, that that's potentially, uh, that's just nuts. Yeah. All right. Um, she also has Majesty. That'll cost you majesty. three. It's a complex action, and it's an aura within nine inches. Uh, you can't have moved. You can't be in base-to-base with an enemy, and it's once per game. While within the aura, each inch moved counts as two inches for any enemy model's movement. This model cannot be targeted by enemy effects, and enemy models cannot enter base-to-base with this model. So this is going to be a character that's also going to be very hard to take out as well, is what that means. Um, And then finally, Seduction, because she's a queen. She can have whatever she wants. Um, Cost you two. It's a simple action. Target of six inches and it's imposed key test. Can't be in base to base with any enemy enemy models. Once per turn, target model gains stupid until the end phase. Because, you know, love is... It makes you really dumb, I suppose. Unique effects. Uh, This model may only be included in the followers of a Nari theme. That's becoming pretty common at this point. Uh, an inch indention. That's a interesting thing to say out loud. Uh, all friendly Kitsune are considered to have line of sight to any point that any friendly Kitsune has line of sight to. Okay. That makes it really hard to get... That's going to make it almost impossible to get cover from anything. Yeah, no, that's really, really good. Um... Oh. To answer my previous question, (laughs) Ryujin does have plus four on his bite. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Um, Also, we might just, on on seduction, so target model gains stupid until the end phase. So stupid 
uh, that rule, uh, the model, so the model uh, cannot, sorry, this model with stupid cannot declare weight, um, disengage, scenario, or any complex action. So that's, that's like charge or anything like that. But yeah, any scenario action can't, inter can't interact with any like objectives or do any uh, prayers, can't even leave combat, can't do anything. So that's pretty cool to uh, to do. I'm glad that's like once per turn because that's pretty for, for two key. That's pretty good. Especially if um, it's one of your complex models that, that is there to pay for its rice cost. If you can pull it off against someone that's cost them a lot of rice, that's really going to upset some people. But also like, yeah, so can't disengage, can't do complex actions. So, for example, like, um, you could target the uh, – I'll go straight to Minamoto because it's my mindset. Mm -hmm. But, like, you could t uh, you can uh, target the big bear who wants to charge. That's what he wants to do. He always wants to charge. He can't. He just sits there contemplating life. He yep. goes, oh, the pretty fox lady is pretty. Um, now, she's, she's really good for 20 rice. Uh, so, if you're not your combat monster, you know, she can be capable in combat. I mean, she's got – You've got the ability there, but yeah, she's definitely one of those. She's going to be sitting back doing your, um, you know, those key abilities of hers, which are amazing. Um, she's got defensive, so it means if she is in combat, she has to throw more defensive dice than any attack dice. So I think that makes a lot of sense given how this character works, though. Too, she's like, look, oh, I don't, don't, don't hurt me, but like that kind of takes away from the provenance because, like, if you do do a successful attack, you gain that plus um, four uh, strength. Um, so, but you know, it, yeah, she's not she's not bad, um, but yeah, if she does get like a punch through, it hits like a freaking freight train. Um, the other oh. thing that just occurred to me, if she targets mm -hmm. somebody and they can't hit weight, then the ranged, which would be the most effective thing against her, once they're out of ammo, they can't reload. Yeah, once they've got those reload markers, you can go stop it. You're not <laughs> stop it. You're not shooting it again. And they're like, oh, yeah. okay, this is box yep. lady. Um, and then while she sits there floating above them, going like, no, look at me. Like she sits I there, waves. Beautiful. <laughs> she's a great model. Oh, she's um, amazing. Yeah. I, 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 I like heard you like done. robes, so we've given you robes so that you can wear robes while you robe. But hang on, not all of them are robes, man. At the bottom, there are a bunch of foxtails too. True. I heard you like robes and foxtails. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think she's great. Like, no, oh, no, she's amazing, a hundred percent. And I like, and it makes sense. I mean, if you take the theme, you're going to get these powerful models, and so far we've got three. Um, so my guess is like. I don't know, down the line, like as I said, they might have some other sort of general releases which sort of like link in with these guys, but can be added um, to you know the, the just the regular temple. Uh, but yeah, they're really cool. Um, yeah, what are your th like? I mean, I really like anything? the queen. Um, mm. I I really like the queen. Um, yeah, the point like the where Agile I I think she's a must. With these sort of yeah. factions, realistically, you don't tend to remove things in and out of them anyway because they're usually designed to work together and not separate. Yeah. Um, but she's she's very powerful, yeah. mainly because she's very she's going to be very hard to take out. Yeah, she. I mean, uh, she doesn't have a lot of armor. Fair enough, and like a lot of this faction, you probably won't see a lot of armor. Um, sorry, uh, like this box set won't have a lot of guys with a lot of armor in it. Mm. Um, but I mean, she's got. They've all got evasive. They can get out of trouble when they need to. They can move around the ball quite quickly. Um, yeah, no, no, she's pretty. She's pretty good as well. Um, do you want to move on to the white faced fox? Yep. All right. Okay. So this guy, like, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it. So he, the white-faced fox, fox form, like there's a lot of fox in that sentence. Uh, he's 19 rice. Uh, he is a kitsune. He is a yokai, and he's unknown. Um, I like this model with the, the blindfold. I think he's really cool on the bow. So he's got a melee pool of one. He's, he can boost that for three. Uh, he's got a move... Um, 
Uh, movement seven. Uh, he's got he can, he can boost his movement for two. He's got six health. Uh, he's got one range, but he's in fox form. He's not going to be doing anything, uh, any shooting. Uh, he's, he generates three key a turn, can uh, hold nine, and he can uh, boost his opposed key tests for two. Uh, he's got bite, sidestep defense zero. We're going to see, it's a fox. We're going to see this again. Um, agile, aloof, dodge poo, evasive, light footed, six sense, soulless, uh, tiny, and weak. Uh, he's got Lurker, and he's got Shape Fit Shift, which are his two key abilities. So Lurker is for two key. You have to be active. Um, it just affects yourself. Uh, you can't do this in base base contact with an enemy. This model gains Camouflage 2 until the end phase. It's pretty good, um, especially for also going to be tiny as well. So it's going to, yeah, that's pretty good. Can't be charged unless within two inches of an enemy. Um, and then you got Shape Shift. Uh, like the others, so one key, active, special, replace this uh, model with white-faced fox, human form model, transfer all marked wound, state markers, enhancements, and any tokens and counters to the white, so the white-faced fox, human forms profile card. Unique effects. When deploying this model, you must deploy the white-faced fox, fox form model, and begin with that profile card. So it has to be deployed as a fox. Uh, white face fox. <laughs> the white face fox's fox form and human form profiles are considered the same model when creating a warband. And while attempting to target this model, enemy models lose six cents. Not a bad little thing to do on a fox. Um, yeah, there's a nice little perk there. We'll move on to white-faced fox's human form. Uh, special rice cost there, Kitsune, Yokai, and Unknown. He's got a melee pool of three and can boost that for three. That's pretty good. He's a competent fighter. Um, he's got a movement of four. He can boost his movement for two. He's got six health. Uh, he's got a range pool of three, and he can boost that for three. Really, really good. He can he generates three key a turn. He can bank nine, and he can um, so he's got a, a key pool of nine, and he can boost his opposed key tests for two. He's got a katana, pretty good, plus one strength, which gives key block. It's fantastic. Mm. Sidestep defense zero, amazing, and sweep defense one. That's also pretty good. Um, yeah, that's really good for on, on him. Uh, we'll go on to his bow, which also generates key block when on a successful attack and has got a reload marker of one. He's got plus one uh, strength. Its range bands are 5, 10, and 15. That's not bad. Uh, he's got Adept Melee 1. Uh, he's also got Assassin. Um, he's got Cloud Walk, Evasive. Faint one, parry one, range defense one, six sense, soulless, and vengeance yokai. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's really, really good. So, a depth melee one, um, when rolling uh, descriptor, so uh, melee tests, this model may keep up to X additional support thing dice beyond the usual two. When also um, adds plus one to the highest dice value in the final result. So normally you can only so if you if he goes if he boosts for four and, he, and generates four um, and he rolls uh, four dice in melee for example um, he can he can keep all four dice because of that melee adept melee rule. Um, so that's that's actually really really good. So he's got two uh, key feats. He's got Lurker, which we covered um, in his Fox form. Uh, so for two, um, it's an active model. You gain the um, the Camouflage 2 uh, marker to the end phase. Um, and then he's got Shadow. So this is a two key feat. It's an instant, so it can be done at any time. It's a pulse of four. You can't be in base-to-base -base contact with an enemy, and it's a once-per-turn ability. So during the enemy's model's activation, when it begins a movement in the pulse, once the movement is completed, this model may walk up to its move towards the enemy model 
uh, so to the enemy model's final position. So if somebody comes into um, near near you, you can move up to it if you really wanted to. So kind of has that sort of like fox the like chasing its prey sort of um, sort of theme there. Um, I like that. That's kind of like a bit of a especially for a competent fighter uh, that he is. Uh, that's a pretty bit bit of a deterrent there for your opponent and something to think about. He has some unique effects. So whilst attempting to target this model, enemy models lose six cents. So that's a bit of a F you to ninjas. Um, or, or any model with six cents, I should say. Um, then at the start of this model's activation, choose one of the following. Walk this model one inch. This model gains intangible until the end of the activation. That's also really, really good. So you can just like get away from combat or, you know, intangible, like you avoid zone of controls, I believe. And this also, this guy also has got cloud walk and evasive. So yeah, I like the white faced Fox for 19 rice. I think he's amazing. Something has just occurred to me with all of these shapeshifters. Yeah. Once they have shapeshifted, they can't then shapeshift back again. Some of them can, some of them can't. Is it just, so is it just some of them? Let me have a look. Uh, so Whiteface Fox doesn't have a key feat of, um, of shapeshift. Oh, no, Takero uh, can. Takero can, um, and I believe... Yeah, you're right. Uh, Kuto, uh, Kuto can't. She can't shapeshift back. Uh, Ten Kengoko doesn't have the fox, abil uh, fox ability, and Juko doesn't have the fox ability. So you're right. Um, mm. Only only uh, Takuro can. He can change back into a fox. The others can't. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That would, I suppose, that's why he can also move between both. He can start as either of them because he's also the only one that can do that. Uh, hang on, I'm, I think it's covered in the unique effect. So, um, so for example, uh, fox form and human form profiles are considered the same model when creating the warband. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, oh, yeah. No, okay. Maybe, maybe they. So, if they're the same model, does that mean has shape shift all the time? I don't know. But if that was the case, the other cards wouldn't have, because Takeru specifically yeah. has it on both. Yeah, he does. You're right. The faction. We I've asked the Discord, uh, the Bushido Discord, about the um, the fox. Yeah, it's correct. So once they transform from the fox form for some of these models, uh, you can't hit, uh, shape shift back. So yeah, we've just answered that question. Um, so yeah, they just said nope because there's no key form that permits it, so you can't on the model, but if the model has the key form, uh, so key feet shapeshift, you're it's allowed to do it. There you go. Yeah, I'm right. Um, well, we kind, of, we kind of knew that, but it was good to get yeah. clarification. Yeah. Um, do we want to go into the rest of the cards before we go into the other characters that are not released first? Yes, I think we should. In REH, it's an event that you need to purchase. It'll cost you three rice. You can only have one of them. This card is to be per this card is purchased as an event and must be given to the opponent who may attach it to a valid model as an enhancement equipment card ignoring factions requirements followers of anari theme I was looking at this and the reason Ben was just giggling is because the first time I read this I'm like wait but this doesn't do anything because it's a second there's a second part to this so the enhancement equipment. When a Kinsune model declares an action targeting the attached model, you may discard this card to immediately end that model's activation. So it's a, it's you discard this to get out of jail free once. Yeah. I, hang on. I like it also how the Nari Rice is minus three Rice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's minus um, three rice. Oh, I didn't even notice the minus. Yeah. So this actually, <laughs> you get your stuff three rice cheaper, but it means that you have to give them a get out of jail free card. Or maybe you have to give them three rice. Uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> that's, that's going to be that's interesting. I'll, I'll wait. I'll, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do there. But yeah, that's kind of cool. You know, I, I, I mean, it goes. It's kind of cool. You just give it to 
yeah, you give it to like a, a model and go, well, you know. Um, and you, you pray that they don't put it on somebody that, that they need to have it on. You, you pray that they put it on the wrong person. Um, Depending on what you spend that three rice on, though, that could that could still be worth it. Yeah, might be not be bad. Um, yeah, no, I like it. It works with the, uh, the equipment card. Messenger of Inari. So this is an event card. It's uh, going to cost you one rice. Uh, you can have only a maximum of one. So at the starting phase, only if a friendly Vim is still on the table, change a friendly Vim. So this is going to benefit you if, if you need to do that. So if something of yours is in trouble and, it's, and you know it's your Vim, you can, you can swap it around. Um, so a new Vim is still revealed. as So if it was open Vim, so this is like part of the scenario where you have the very important model and you, you announce your opponent which one that is. Or already revealed hidden vim. So some of them you keep you keep to yourself. So you just change it and you make a note of it. Uh, remains hidden as if it was hidden uh, and not revealed. So you don't reveal it once you change the, the vim. Uh, a nominated vim is once again nominated by the opponent and a new vim must be chosen if possible. So basically yourself and your opponent are changing um, uh, the vims there. And so so it's uh, requirements is the followers of Inari uh, theme. It's good. To, um, that's that's a nice little option to have if you want, especially if you're playing in like a tournament and there is that scenario, um, that scenario or oh, mission scenario. I was gonna say with the vim. Um, if you have a vim that's in trouble, or on the other thing, if they have a vim that is causing you trouble, you could force them to change it as well. So it, it it's there's a couple of different reasons why you may want to take this. Yeah. Test of an hour. Yeah. So this is an event test. Play in the starting phase. Choose an enemy model to take a key test challenge. Sorry, a key challenge test. Six. If successful, that model gains one key token. Otherwise, it gains a spirit block marker. (laughs) Uh, Only one event. Test card may be played. uh, Sorry, may be played per turn. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So you you can only use one of these per turn. This doesn't cost you anything, but you can only have one. Mm. Uh, do you want to do Test of the Fox? So we've got a few yeah. of these. Yeah, Test of the Fox. So play at the starting phase. Uh, choose an enemy model to make a move challenge test of eight. Uh, if successful, that model gains one key token. Otherwise, it loses an activation counter. Not bad. Oh. Uh, only only one event test card may be played per turn, so this will link in with your other uh, event tests, like um, like test of Inari. That's that's really really good. So if there's something coming down the line, and you, you can throw that out, that so throw this at that, and then hopefully you know it fails that key te- um, that key test and loses the activation. Coming up bad. next, we have test of the man. This is this is. Again, it's another event. This one is still free. All of these appear to be free, I believe. Yep. Ooh, excuse me. Excuse you. Uh, play, in the, play in the starting phase. Choose an enemy model to take a size challenge test six. If successful, that model gains one key token. Otherwise, it gains an impetuous marker. Ooh. And again, you can only use one of these per turn. And it can only be taken in the theme. Yep. That's not bad. Impetuous means it has to move, so you can. It, 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 so a lot of these guys are messing like the because I mean, it kind of goes in, in hand in hand with the law, really. Law, I want to be a law channel, but anyway, um, they like Nari, like so foxes are tricky. They, 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 you know, they, you know, if you do harm to them, they're gonna like, you know, they're gonna, you know, it's a bit of a curse or bad luck to do so. So this is this is really fitting in with that. Um, we'll go, uh, test of the path. The test of the path is an event test. So play at the starting phase, choose an enemy model to make a, to take a melee pool challenge test of six or range pool challenge test of six, whichever, uh, stat is higher. If it's successful, the model gains one key token. Otherwise it gains a control marker. Ooh, that's good. I like um, the fact that there's an other side to all of these as well. 
I really yeah. like this. Yeah. Only one event uh, test card may be played per turn. Um, it's zero and you can only have one of these. Um, that's good. So you could, so you would probably target that at like one of the, maybe like the lower ranking guys or, you know, low profile. Um, like maybe with a key test of, yeah, that's pretty cool. I and mean, then you can control it and you can cause some havoc. I like it. Um, did you want to move on to some of the um, enhancements? So we got Fortuitous Path. It's an enhancement. In the starting phase of turn four, the attached model gains an activation counter. But it needs to be a Kitsune. Yeah. That's okay. That's all we have. This costs you two rice and you can have up to three of these. I definitely like this one. Yeah. So, okay, so turn, so what is it, turn four. So turn four is usually when everybody is, like, in the, pretty much in the midst of combat. So this is going to be for 2P per model, you know, for three, three of your guys, especially, or I would give it to the white-faced fox um, for sure. Gives them an activation counter. Or give it to... Um, your spellcaster as well lets them cast another spell um, on one of their activations or something, or key feet, I should say. Um, Especially if, you, yeah, if you've been saving that up, get the queen to go, boom. Yeah, do what it needs to do. Uh, or um, move where they need to move to get like get somewhere. Like, mm. Especially, you know, movement four is, is, is okay. It's stock standard. But, I mean, yeah, you can you can get where you need to. Or, this is really good. This is yeah. this is, becomes pretty flexible. And you can have three of them, which is... Also pretty good. Um, we'll go on to the the other enhancement, uh, which is Inari's Veil. So attached model begins the game with a disguise six marker um, requirement. Followers of uh, the Inari theme, uh, it's going to cost you one key. This is great, and you can only have one of them. Um, that's great. Disguise six, amazing. Um, always useful to have. Yeah. Um, coming um, up next, we have the folded paper lantern. This is an, an enhancement equipment. Um, attached model ignores any darkness effect and breath of your eye. So this, like, if you know you're facing the the cult of your eye, that's where this comes up. Um, we was going to try and talk about what the darkness effect actually is, but unfortunately, the website's not working at the moment. Um, but I will add a link into the show notes and it will be down below for you. Yeah. Breath of um, Uri is an ability that some of the Uri characters as well. And again, it'll be in the show notes for you. Yeah. I think darkness also is um, goes in hand with uh, the Bakamono, I think, from memory. Um, I think it's the not thousand. Uh, yeah. You might be right on that, actually. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, I think it's from memory. It's the thousand eye theme. What is it? Darkness. During it's like it's like uh, it's it's like during the first turn. during the first turn, the darkness key feat is in effect from the start without paying any cost. So yes, you're right. So this is actually useful for both cult of your eye and for the Bakimono. Yeah, but I reckon also. Maybe down the line we might see some other sort of factions get access to potentially darkness. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's good. It's always, like, foreshadowing, I should have, <laughs> would imagine. But, yeah, follow paper uh, lantern, one key, not bad. You can make um, your unit uh, ignore those effects. Uh, folded paper tiger, which is the other enhancement equipment, um, when an enemy animal model declares a melee or charge against the attached model it must make a key test no, sorry, a key test challenge of five um, if it fails its activation ends and it loses one activation counter this is two rice and, and you can only have maximum of one photo paper tiger is, is awesome because everybody loves animals like um like i see on on the table like there's those uh what is it the silver moon players they take the um they take the two pit bull, uh, sorry, uh, pit dogs, or they oh, take the two yeah, silver. the jaguar, and yeah. That's really, really good. Um, awesome. My mindset goes that that will that will 
give me definitely great paws with uh, my bears and stuff on them. Um, yeah, no, that, that's really great. And I'm a lot more factionated getting access to animals. Um, yeah, folded paper tiger is awesome as well. Um, I think that's pretty much all the cards that come in that box set. Yeah. So now we're going to move on to the two characters that are not out yet. We expect that these two characters will be available when this goes on to general release, but that has not been announced at this stage. That's just what yeah. we expect is going to happen. Well, the, the, both of these profiles are currently on the, the app, um, as we sort of mentioned before. Uh, one of them is uh, Ho, so Ho Fuku, and one is uh, Senshi. Uh, do you want to talk about Senshi? Yep. So Senshi is a Katsune. Gee, that, I know that's going to be very shocking to you at this point. Uh, 17 rice. Oh, he's also a yukai. Sorry. Uh, yep. He has three melee. He can boost it for three. He can move four. He's got six wounds. He's got three ranged. He can boost it for three. He has. He generates two key. He can hold nine, and he can boost his challenges for two. He has a sublime die show, which is strength X minus two, which we will come back to in a minute. Combo attack zero, sidestep attack one. Uh, sorry, sidestep defense one. Uh, he has adept melee one, armor two. So somebody finally has armor. Bodyguard Kitsune six inches, which is definitely going to be useful. Bravery, evasive, faint one. Parry one and six cents. He has one key ability called Vitality. It'll cost you three. It's an instant personal and it's once per turn. This model gains an activation counter. So don't waste that card on this guy. He has it built in. Unique effects. After an enemy effect moves or places this model, once the effect is resolved, you may place this model within two inches of its current location. This model may be placed into base to base with an enemy model using this unique effect. And then the Sublime Die Show. This weapon's strength modifier is variable X. X is equal to the current turn number. So this guy's weapon gets better as the game goes. Yeah. So early on, not so great. I mean, turns one and two. Is basically, you know, it's um, it's going to have minus two strength to a strength potentially a strength two, so it's going to be zero. Yep. Um, but anyway, turns one and two, you're pretty much moving into position to get into get into turn three, which is where you where your combat models will start taking effect. So he'll have strength one moving on, then up gets stronger and stronger. Um, the fact that he's got armor as well, um, will probably help him out, keep him a bit a uh, bit alive. Um. The fact he's got faint one and parry one, pretty pretty stock standard. Uh, that's really that's really really good. Um, combo attack zero on a melee pull three, uh, and he can boost for three. That's really really good. Um, Sidestep defense one, great as well. Um, I like this guy. He's really cool. The model really cool, holding the sort of the um, the supreme nation like over his shoulder, classic sort of um, uh, pose. Um, we haven't seen the sculpt yet, but we're just sort of like going off the artwork on the back of the card. Yeah. Uh, did yeah. you want to touch on Hofuku? Hofuku? Hofuku you. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Hofuku is 19. This is the model I, um, I also like. He's got two banners. Um, he's 19 rice. He's melee pool of three. I'll start with the fact that he's a Kitsune and a Yokai. So he's melee pool of three. He can boost that for three key. He's got a movement of four. So, um, and he's got um, six health. He's got a range pool of three. He can boost that for three as well. He's got a, he generates three key a turn. Uh, he can hold nine. He has got, and he can boot, uh, so he can boost key, opposed key test for two. He's got mercy, which gives reach. Plus, it's got plus one strength, the weapon, and it's got push defense zero. That's great. And then he's got executioner. Sorry, execution, uh, which has reach. And then it's got powerful attack one, so it'll cost you one dice. And it has uh, X, so plus X strength. Now, he's got adept melee one. He's got 
Armor two. He's got bravery. He's got evasive. He's got faint. He's got parry. He's got six sense. He's got vengeance, death sentence. So that sort of goes hand in hand with um, some of your abilities there with um, uh, the spellcaster. You can, you know, you choose to have a death sentence marker. And he's got uh, one key feat, which is restitution. So two key. Uh, you have to be the active player and you um, target of six. And then it's a once per turn ability until the end phase. Target friendly model with a control marker gains plus one to its melee pool and range pool while it has a control marker. So it goes hand in hand as well with like, you know, if you if any if any models you're controlling have a control marker, for example, like that you're using, you can boost them, which kind of goes hand in hand with some of the spells that are available there. Um, unique effect, execution. This weapon's strength modifier is variable X. X is equal to the number of marked wounds on the target. So this, okay, so that's really good. So basically if you're like whittling away at a target and then you get this guy into combat and it's got, say, for example, like four health, your strength goes into four. That's really, really good. Yeah. He's really good at finishing the job. Yeah. That also would go... Oh, I was just going to say this would go. He'd like start cleaving through Oni because, like, Oni have got huge amounts of health. Like, it's ridiculous. Or, or, or even uh, Bushi, like this, the sumo guys, have heaps of health. And then this guy will come in and go, Cool, my strength is, you know, like, you've got six wounds on you. Boom, I'm strength six. That's nuts. And, and if you really wanted to with Executioner, you could pop yourself a melee, uh, a dice for powerful attack, which even gets strong. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, that's really good. Uh, I like him. The model is the model, the artwork looks really, really cool on the back of the card. Yeah, no, um, the, yeah, the artwork seen... on this guy is amazing. The artwork on both of them is really good. And I like like his sword coming up in between, like kind of dividing his face. Yeah, so there's the artwork as well, which is the, the box set, um, which has got all the faction and then the Bushido. So, Laurie, do you want to just bring that up so we can kind of get a look at everybody? Yep, just um, give me one second. All right, I've I got it up. I don't know if it has a tail, but she's got a fox one. So you, you were talking about yeah. the actual drawn art, just for the record? Yeah, this is so this is was released on the Bushido um, sort of website, so this is the artwork. Yep. But, like, here you can sort of see a lot more of the, the artwork of the guys. So we've got, like, you know, you got Juco down the bottom. You've got the white-faced uh, fox. you got got um, uh, the two uh, foxes we were just talking about. Um, which might be the general release. So you got the two banners there. There's, you got the you got the queen. Um, yeah, you got everything. You got a, and the nine tail fox there on the on the bottom. Yeah, I reckon this artwork's amazing. Really, really cool. The other one I really like. You, you touched on this a little earlier with the foxes. How one of them is actually holding a snake, like as a as a giant middle finger to the Ito. I I, I really liked that as well. Um. And the little black fox with his sickle is just so cool. Yeah, but, I um, yeah. I also I also like how so for example, like some of the models. Uh, so when we're going through like the artwork, like uh, Kyoto, um, uh, if you look at her sculpts, like in the in, in the background, sort of behind you, she's kind of more human, and she's got like a fox mask on her, but then she's got the mm -hmm. fox form. Um, but some of them are like pure fox. Oh, sorry, Kitsune, I should say. And then, like, the queen, for example, who's got all those tails coming out, you know, from below her robes and everything. Um, but she's also got that uh, Kitsune mask. Um, I just, yeah. yeah, I like the sort of they've gone with it. Like, some of them are kind of human. Some of them are, are more animal-esque. Um, I, really, I, I, I really love the sculpts. I think they're amazing. And as we said at the beginning, like, if, you, if, if you're, like, Somebody who loves painting models and pouring detail into into these guys, I reckon they're going to be amazing. If you could do something like with the bases, make them more like forest esque, that would be awesome. Um, that would be the like, direction that I would go. Like it, it, you want these to be in beautiful meadows and flowers and like just long grass. That just what, what I was that. thinking. Yeah, what I was thinking, like if I was to to get them. Um, I was thinking like uh, Ghost of uh, Tets, uh, Tetsume, the the PlayStation uh, game. 
during in that gang you uh, find fox dens yep. and usually the fox den has got like uh, this golden um a tree above it so like putting scatter some like golden leaves on the ground would be awesome like here and there or maybe some plants maybe look yeah you can no, I'm not gonna buy them. God damn it! <laughs> uh, I I really really would love to. Uh, I I know we had a comment on one of my recent videos asking us to unbox this next. Unfortunately, none of us own this. Uh, we are a very small independent channel, and all of the uh, everything that happens here is stuff that we purchase with our own very limited incomes. So at at time of recording, it's it's not happening. I'm sorry. Um. It may happen in a couple of months if one of us decide to purchase it at that stage, if our budgets can allow it. Uh, but for the moment, uh, our friends across at Gaming With The Guys do have yeah. an unboxing, which is very good. I have linked that in a couple of comments already. Um, but if you do a search for Gaming With The Guys, it's one of their most recent videos. So it's very easy. I tell you if, ever, if anybody down there comment, so if anybody adds to the comment section and says, Ben, buy the foxes, and we get enough of those comments, I will convince my wife to let me do it, and I will do an unboxing for you guys, for sure. <laughs> um, I'll have to say, look, I've been peer pressured by the internet. I have to give in to the internet. <laughs> um, it's good, it's good to see that you can um, hold your own there. And that you don't let people <laughs> bully you into buying things. Please, bully me, people. Bully me into buying this box set. I'm already semi there, I'm not going to lie. Uh, did you want to bring up the picture uh, I also provided of the um, of the three foxes together painted? These guys, um, that, that painting is amazing. Um, Agreed. I had, it up, like, a little, I had it up a little minute ago, but yes, I do agree. Oh, did you? Sorry. I, no, I, no, I, I no. can't see. No, I know. <laughs> I can't see the. I, I brought it up when I mentioned about the um the Ito thing. Um, all three of these look amazing. This is why I was saying earlier that this is a box set that if you want to spend the time on it, I mm. honestly believe if you had the skill, this is a, this is a box set that you could win win awards for, because you really could go nuts with the textures on this if you have the skill for it. I don't have the skill for it. Uh, but for those that do, honestly, I think this is this is a painter's dream. This box, people, people could lose themselves in this for months. Yeah, I mean, look at like like the, the snake, like it's and the the robes, colors and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, to be fair with you, uh, I think in, Je in Japanese, is all the the dark fox, which is you know, is is quite a, is a pretty lucky. Silver foxes are quite lucky from them. Okay. They're they're a bit of a thing. I like them, but yeah, look. I mean, I but all right. of these have been painted up to be like actual look like they're actual foxes, except obviously for the clothing and stuff. Uh, but I think you could really have a lot of fun here with trying to push the mystical side of it and actually make them look. I mean, you want to make them look more anime. Go for cell shaded stuff, or maybe like if you if you was to use some, you, you could kind of use some metallics or. Like the um, there's a metallic medium that you can get that you can mix into any color you want, and you can kind of use that to make it look like there's a shimmering coming off the fur or something. You'd have to be really careful with how you use it. You could have a lot of fun with this. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not probably huge fan only of do that sort of thing like around the tails and stuff. If you were to, I'm yeah. not telling you to do that. I'm just giving people ideas. I'm I'm not a huge fan of like metallic like in clothing and stuff like that. It's not really my sort of jam. But like yeah, no, I, I would go try to go really realistic with these guys. Um, the same like I I I did with my two bears. Like I tried to make them very like the uh, the northern bear and the southern uh, Jap the northern Japanese and southern Japanese sort of bear. I personally, tried to be very personally. I'm yeah. with you. I I I would really enjoy painting this up to be like actual fur and stuff. Person. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I like them. I, they've got all of all of the models have got great character. They're resin, so they're gonna they're gonna be heavily detailed, just like the two. I think these are even better than the two player starter set. I gotta reckon. I would um, agree with you on that. Yeah, are they great? Oh god, I'm yeah. They, uh, I'm gonna buy another faction, aren't I? Shout okay. out, shout uh, out to everybody that was involved, and I'm not just saying it because you're here. 
shout out to everyone that was involved in the playtesting for this because this probably more than anything else really feels like it's a balanced entity right now i mean there's some really nice powerful stuff here but it doesn't feel like it's screaming that it's broken um i right. really don't see a lot that people could complain about i mean the, maybe the queen but like the queen is none of this screams like it's just broken it just screams that it's good and that's a really yeah. hard balance to find yeah the um here's the thing is like i i reckon this this faction plays quite well it's all about I, it, it seems like everything is about disturbing your opponent's battle plan like yeah. i mean a lot of your guys have, like you know have got a, and especially also your event cards have got that sort of like um you know um the tests like tests and everything but also like some of your attacks have got like what p block so you can do that on you've got a lot of tools in this box set this is a box set that you're going to want to spend some time with uh and Mm. like you're going to have to get a few games under your belt to start getting used to i mean there are some sort of there are some people out there that just pick up complex things like this very very quickly but for most of us this is a box set that you're going to need to have a couple of games with before you find how you want to play it and this is this is a faction that you could play a couple of different ways um but i i would encourage people to get this on the table as soon as they can for those yeah no yeah i think uh, but also like i mean a lot of your models are um they're very they're reasonably priced for what they do so i like this good value yeah, you did not everything's like a twenty or an eighteen, which you know, which is the big sort of like big price costs there and everything. Yeah. But like, I mean, also the fact that you can bring in your the existing Kitsoni models, so you can bring in Kota, the um, uh, you know, the the old um, uh, human form and Fox form, the original sort of like uh, transforming one, uh, or uh, Kayubi, uh, the sam- the guy with the, the two swords, and oh, sorry, he's got one sword, sorry, and he's the fighting one. He's also um, quite reasonably priced as well. Um, because what I think they're let's have a look. Kyuubi is eighteen rice, pretty good. So you know, and he's a competent fighter as well. Um, and then uh, Kota, uh, Kota is she's eighteen rice as well. So yeah, you can bring in some of the older stuff, and, and you know, they've got some. They got they still hold up their own, but this box set is great as well. Um, it just gives it gives more options really. So it'll be exciting to see what comes down the line as well. Yeah, no, I agree. They run, they said Roman uh, Kitsune, so who knows? There's going to be maybe like some old like Mr. Fox thing coming out. Who knows? That'll be kind of cool to see what comes. Yep. Well, thank you very much for today, Ben. Uh, thank you to those that are listening. Um, we recorded this a couple of days ago. I have some editing that needs to be done. <laughs> and as much as I've said it, that I wasn't, I, I've been avoiding this all night. Ben, I'm going to do it. You okay? You've made it through to the end of another video. Your next mission is to hit subscribe and comment down below. If you'd like to reach out to the team, consider doing that, getting tabled at gmail.com. Consider subscribing to our Patreon. For only $2 a month, you get early access to almost every single video that we do. Our most active social media is facebook.com slash getting tabled. It's where you'll find everything first. There's also a Discord. There's an invite on screen right now. If you type that in, it'll give you instant access. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, you can find us at Getting Tabled. It's not the most active, but it's something we're trying to use more all the time. Come and check out Jason the Bruce at Twitch. He does both video game and hobby content. And of course, without question, play more games.